These videos have been produced on site in a large fabrication facility, and we ask your understanding for the environmental background noise. The Copper Development Association is pleased to present a series of video presentations covering welding of copper nickel alloy. This video is the third in a series designed to provide welders with the principles of joining 9010 and 7030 engineering grades of copper nickel. To recap, in our first video, we covered preparation for welding. Maintain a high level of cleanliness and avoid contamination, which can cause weld cracking. Preheat and post-weld heat treatments are unnecessary. There are elements that even in small amounts are very detrimental to copper nickel alloys and if present on the surface before welding, they can cause embrittlement and cracking. The elements that are particularly harmful are lead, sulfur, phosphorus, and other low melting point metals. The fabrication of copper nickel alloy pipe and tubes is similar to that of other alloys such as carbon and stainless steels. We are assuming that all viewing this video are familiar with the basics of welding, and our message is to point out where the copper nickel alloys are different and exceptions are needed. The basic guidelines for TIG welding are covered in the copper nickel alloy TIG welding video and are applicable to pipe welding. Some important points to remember are the need for high frequency or a lift start and a downslope or current decay to minimize start and crater defects. Prepare tungsten electrodes the same as you would for stainless steel. Use as large a cup size as practical or a gas lens. In this demonstration, we will be using a pipe which has a 200 millimeter diameter. While this is a common industry pipe size, copper nickel alloy tube sizes can vary from small diameter thin wall condenser tubes to pipes as big as 610 millimeters in diameter and even larger. We've prepared this pipe for welding using a 45 degree bevel angle and a 1.5 millimeter root face. Root face can be anywhere from 1.5 to 2.4 millimeters depending on wall thickness and other issues. It is important to have a uniform root face, or land as it is often called, around the pipe circumference for the welder to make a uniform root pass. This is best done by machining and an ID counter bore may be needed to correct pipe that is out of round. The root pass technique we'll use on this joint will be an open root joint with hand-fed filler material. This is commonly used on stainless steel and other pipe alloys. The root pass technique is an area of flexibility, and best results are often obtained using the technique the welder is most familiar with, allowing for differences in fluidity. Whenever pipe joints can be rotated so that they can be welded in the downhand position, that's certainly preferable and a whole lot easier. In many cases, however, pipe must be welded in a fixed position, and we're going to show welding in a horizontal fixed position. For many pipe joints, the inside of the pipe must be purged with argon to remove any oxygen that might cause oxidation on the inside. We'll use 100% argon. We will set up a purge dam with argon flowing in. We'll let that purge run long enough to remove any air that's inside the pipe that could cause oxidation. We'll also tape up any place where the gas might escape so that the area that we weld will have a good purge behind it. We've tack welded this pipe section together. Notice that our tack welds are closer together than you'd normally use for carbon or stainless steels. This is typical, again, of copper nickel welding. Also, our tacks are quite small so that they're easily incorporated into the final weld. Also be sure to inspect all the tack welds to make sure they're sound and to wire brush and remove any oxides before starting to weld. We're about ready to start welding. You'll notice that we have a gas cup that's a little bit larger than you might use on stainless steel. It needs to be big enough to get good gas coverage and yet small enough not to interfere with the welder's vision of the puddle. We're using 1.5 millimeter diameter 7030 copper nickel filler metal. The 
You'll notice that we're using pulsation for our gas tungsten arc welding power. This is especially useful on thin walled copper nickel pipes such as we're welding today. Also notice that here as in every case we're using the vertical up progression. After the weld is made, post weld clean to a bright finish and visually inspect the weld to assure that it meets desired quality, the proper weld contour, and is free of defects such as cracks, undercut, and lack of fusion and penetration. Both the ID root weld, when accessible, and the weld face should be visually inspected. In addition to these video presentations, there is also free printed and downloadable literature covering all aspects of copper-nickel alloys, including fabrication, welding, and corrosion resistance.